The next main judge is Jephthah, who's something of a mafia thug living up in the hills. And when things get really bad for Israel, the elders come to him begging for his help. And Jephthah was a very effective leader. He won lots of battles against the Ammonites, but he was so unfamiliar with the God of Israel, he treats him like a Canaanite God. He vows to sacrifice his daughter if he wins the battle. This tragic story, it shows just how far Israel has fallen. They no longer know the character of their own God, which leads to murder and to false worship. Judges 10 after Abimelech, there arose to save Israel Tola, the son of Pua, son of Dodo, a man of Issachar, and he lived at Shamer in the hill country of Ephraim. And he judged Israel twenty-three years. Then he died and was buried at Shamer. After him arose Jair, the Gileadite, who judged Israel twenty-two years. And he had thirty sons who rode on thirty donkeys, and they had thirty cities called Havoth Jair to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried in Canaan. The people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and served the Baals and the Ashtaroth, the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the Ammonites, and the gods of the Philistines. And they forsook the Lord and did not serve him. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of the Philistines and into the hand of the Ammonites. And they crushed and oppressed the people of Israel that year. For eighteen years they oppressed all the people of Israel who were beyond the Jordan in the land of the Amorites, which is in Gilead. And the Ammonites crossed the Jordan to fight also against Judah and against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was severely distressed. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, saying, We have sinned against you, because we have forsaken our God and have served the Baals. And the Lord said to the people of Israel, did I not save you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites, from the Ammonites and from the Philistines, the Sidonians also, and the Amalekites, and the Maonites oppressed you, and you cried out to me, and I saved you out of their hand. Yet you have forsaken me and served other gods. Therefore I will save you no more. Go and cry out to the gods whom you have chosen. Let them save you in the time of your distress. And the people of Israel said to the Lord, We have sinned. Do to us whatever seems good to you. Only please deliver us this day. So they put away the foreign gods from among them and served the Lord, and he became impatient over the misery of Israel. Then the Ammonites were called to arms, and they encamped in Gilead. And the people of Israel came together, and they encamped at Mizpah. And the people, the leaders of Gilead, said one to another, who is the man who will begin to fight against the Ammonites? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Judges 11 Now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty warrior, but he was the son of a prostitute. Gilead was the father of Jephthah, and Gilead's wife also bore him sons. And when his wife's sons grew up, they drove Jephthah out and said to him, you shall not have an inheritance in our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brothers and lived in the land of Tob. And worthless fellows collected around Jephthah and went out with him. After a time, the Ammonites made war against Israel. And when the Ammonites made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to bring Jephthah from the land of Tob. And they said to Jephthah, Come and be our leader that we may fight against the Ammonites. But Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, Did you not hate me and drive me out of my father's house? Why have you come to me now when you are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, That is why we have turned to you now, that you may go with us and fight against the Ammonites and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, if you bring me home again to fight against the Ammonites, and the Lord gives them over to me, I will be your head. And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, The Lord will be witness between us if we do not do as you say. So Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and leader over them. And Jephthah spoke all his words before the Lord at Mizpah. Then Jephthah sent messengers to the king of the Ammonites, and said, what do you have against me, that you have come to me to fight against my land? 
And the king of the Ammonites answered the messengers of Jephthah, Because Israel, on coming up from Egypt, took away my land, from the Arnon to the Jabbok and to the Jordan. Now therefore, restore it peaceably. Jephthah again sent messengers to the king of the Ammonites, and said to him, Thus says Jephthah, Israel did not take away the land of Moab or the land of the Ammonites. But when they came up from Egypt, Israel went through the wilderness to the Red Sea and came to Kadesh. Israel then sent messengers to the king of Edom, saying, Please, let us pass through your land. But the king of Edom would not listen. And they sent also to the king of Moab, but he would not consent. So Israel remained at Kadesh. Then they journeyed through the wilderness and went around the land of Edom and the land of Moab and arrived on the east side of the land of Moab and camped on the other side of the Arnon. But they did not enter the territory of Moab, for the Arnon was the boundary of Moab. Israel then sent messengers to Sihon, king of the Amorites, king of Heshbon. And Israel said to him, Please let us pass through your land to our country. But Sihon did not trust Israel to pass through his territory. So Sihon gathered all his people together and encamped at Jahaz and fought with Israel. And the Lord, the God of Israel, gave Sihon and all his people into the hand of Israel, and they defeated them. So Israel took possession of all the land of the Amorites who inhabited that country. And they took possession of all the territory of the Amorites from the Arnon to the Jabbok, and from the wilderness to the Jordan. So then the Lord, the God of Israel, dispossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel. And are you to take possession of them? Will you not possess what Chemosh your God gives you to possess? And all that the Lord our God has dispossessed before us, we will possess. Now, are you any better than Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever contend against Israel, or did he ever go to war with them? While Israel lived in Heshbon and its villages, and in Aror and its villages, and in all the cities that are on the banks of the Arnon, three hundred years, why did you not deliver them within that time? I therefore have not sinned against you, and you do me wrong by making war on me. The Lord, the judge, decide this day between the people of Israel and the people of Ammon. But the king of the Ammonites did not listen to the words of Jephthah that he sent to him. Then the Spirit of the Lord was upon Jephthah, and he passed through Gilead and Manasseh, and passed on to Mizpah of Gilead. And from Mizpah of Gilead he passed on to the Ammonites. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord, and said, if you will give the Ammonites into my hand, then whatever comes out from the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the Ammonites shall be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. So Jephthah crossed over to the Ammonites to fight against them, and the Lord gave them into his hand. And he struck them from a rower to the neighborhood of Minnith, twenty cities, and as far as Abel Kiramim, with a great blow. So the Ammonites were subdued before the people of Israel. Then Jephthah came to his home at Mizpah, and behold, his daughter came out to meet him with tambourines and with dances. She was his only child. Besides her, he had neither son nor daughter. And as soon as he saw her, he tore his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, you have brought me very low, and you have become the cause of great trouble to me. For I have opened my mouth to the Lord, and I cannot take back my vow. And she said to him, My father, you have opened your mouth to the Lord. Do to me according to what has gone out of your mouth, now that the Lord has avenged you on your enemies, on the Ammonites. So she said to her father, Let this thing be done for me. Leave me alone two months, that I may go up and down on the mountains and weep for my virginity, I and my companions. So he said, Go. Then he sent her away for two months, and she departed, she and her companions, and wept for her virginity on the mountains. And at the end of two months she returned to her father, who did with her according to his vow that he had made. She had never known a man, and it became a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went year by year to lament the daughter of Jephthah the Gileadite four days in the year.
Judges 12 The men of Ephraim were called to arms, and they crossed to Zaphon and said to Jephthah, Why did you cross over to fight against the Ammonites and did not call us to go with you? We will burn your house over you with fire. And Jephthah said to them, I and my people had a great dispute with the Ammonites, and when I called you, you did not save me from their hand. And when I saw that you would not save me, I took my life in my hand and crossed over against the Ammonites, and the Lord gave them into my hand. Why then have you come up to me this day to fight against me? Then Jephthah gathered all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. And the men of Gilead struck Ephraim because they said, You are fugitives of Ephraim, you Gileadites, in the midst of Ephraim and Manasseh. And the Gileadites captured the fords of the Jordan against the Ephraimites. And when any of the fugitives of Ephraim said, Let me go over, the men of Gilead said to him, Are you an Ephraimite? When he said, No, they said to him, Then say Shibboleth. And he said, Sibboleth, for he could not pronounce it right. Then they seized him and slaughtered him at the fords of the Jordan. At that time, 42,000 of the Ephraimites fell. Jephthah judged Israel six years. Then Jephthah the Gileadite died and was buried in his city in Gilead. After him, Ibzan of Bethlehem judged Israel. He had 30 sons, and 30 daughters he gave in marriage outside his clan, and 30 daughters he brought in from outside for his sons. And he judged Israel seven years. Then Ibzan died and was buried at Bethlehem. After him, Elon the Zebulonite judged Israel, and he judged Israel ten years. Then Elon the Zebulonite died and was buried at Ajalon in the land of Zebulun. After him, Abdon the son of Hillel the Pirithonite judged Israel. He had forty sons and thirty grandsons who rode on seventy donkeys, and he judged Israel eight years. Then Abdon the son of Hillel the Pirithonite died and was buried at Pirithon in the land of Ephraim in the hill country of the Amalekites. Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hogan. You can start winning with money. You just need the right plan. And we have that plan. It's called Financial Peace University, and it'll teach you how to save money, pay off debt, and spend wisely so you can start investing so you can build wealth like crazy. Over 5 million people have been through this program and are finally living without money stress, and you can too. If you follow this plan, if you focus and you're intentional, it works every single time. You can get your money in order. You can build wealth. And with Financial Peace University, you can start today. Prince William and Kate visited the Caribbean and went swimming with sharks, which is much better than their uncle Andrew, who visited the Caribbean and went swimming with 14-year-olds. <laughs> In an interview with Tucker Carlson, Kid Rock claimed that President Trump once asked him for advice on handling ISIS and North Korea. And seeing as Trump handled ISIS and North Korea pretty well, maybe Joe Biden should ask Kid Rock for advice. <laughs> The Maury Povich show is being canceled after 31 years on the air. Aww. To put that in perspective, this baby who found her daddy in season one is now all grown up and doesn't know which one of these eight men is her baby's daddy. <laughs> this is true. I actually started my career in the entertainment industry interning for Maury Povich. And now 18 years later, NBC canceled him the same day Twitter canceled us. <laughs> 
The cherry blossoms in Washington, D.C. are blooming a week early this year, which means six more weeks of confirmation hearings. <laughs> a Brazilian pop star was hospitalized because she held in her farts around her boyfriend, making it the only problem in the world caused by not Putin. <laughs> Police in New York are looking for a driver who hit a pedestrian while doing donuts in the street. Luckily, police were already on their way when they heard there were donuts. <laughs> UFC star Jorge Masvidal got into a fight with fellow UFC star Colby Covington outside of a Miami steakhouse. Apparently, Jorge had a Colby beef. A driver in California crashed his Tesla after jumping it over a hill at high speed in Echo Park and becoming airborne. The driver wasn't attempting a stunt. He was just trying to clear a huge pile of poop and heroin needles in the road. <laughs> and finally, Hillary Clinton has tested positive for still never being president. Mm. That's it for the weekly news. Come see me at the Funny Farm and Crackpot in Ohio this weekend. Welcome back to another video on Jason Toya. Hey, welcome back. Today we're taking you guys through a 30 minute full body dumbbell workout. Yes. All right, so more specifically today, we're gonna focus on more beginner level strength exercises. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So if you're someone who's just beginning with strength training or learning how to use dumbbells or weights, this is a great workout for you to start off with. We're gonna give you some audio cues throughout the workout to help you with the form and engaging the proper muscles, yes. okay? So all you'll need for this workout is a pair of dumbbells. For reference, I'll be using a pair of 10 pound dumbbells. And I'll be using a pair of 20 pound dumbbells, all right? So for the workout format, we're gonna split this workout into two different sets. Each set will have 13 different exercises, starting with the lower body. So we're gonna have five lower body exercises, five upper body, and then three core abs exercises, all yep. right? We want 40 seconds of work, 20 seconds of rest throughout the entire workout. But between those two sets, we'll give you a 60 second break to grab a drink, take a break, and get ready for the next set that's coming up, oh, yeah. all right? So like she said, there will be audio cues throughout the workout to make sure your form is correct and you're feeling the workout in the right areas. But there are some exercises that may be a little bit more difficult, so you can follow me for modifications. Exactly. So this is a full body workout, so we're gonna take you guys through a nice little warm up. Oh, yeah. Following the warm up, we're gonna get right into it. So All grab right. your mats, grab your weights, hey. and let's get to work.
guys. Bryn here from the X. Uh, thank you guys for watching our video. Um, we hope this is helping you on your Bible goals and uh, your other goals. And uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Also, check those links in the description for all the other uh, non-X material that came to make this video. Thank you guys again for watching and hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and see you tomorrow.